Let's talk about the root cause of all relationship issues <laughs> that yeah. men, well, and women, that, that we all need to know about. Thank you so much for joining us today on Second Act TV. I'm so happy to introduce a new guest to Second Act, anthropologist and culture development expert, Philip Folsom. Philip, thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> Absolute pleasure to be here, Sophie. Philip is the founder and CEO of Wolf Tribe, a team development and leadership organization where, yeah, <laughs> where you've worked with, well, some of the world's leading brands. It says here Sony, Microsoft, DreamWorks, Apple, Disney, Red Bull, and, and the list goes on. And well, you've become quite legendary in those circles with your Wolf Tribe events and, and, and seminars. And the reason I'm excited to have you here today is because, well, you're basically in the business of relationship development. And as an anthropologist, you've developed, well, a very unique approach to the male-female dynamic in relationships. Uh, as a matter of fact, you developed K4, which is, an, uh, well, a program strictly focused for men to teach men how to develop happy, healthy relationships. And so let's focus on that today and specifically on the romantic side of the relationship issues. So I'll throw it over to you, Philip. Give us some background, you know, a little insight into K4, and then let's talk about the root cause of all relationship issues <laughs> that yeah. men, well, and women, that, that we all need to know about. Yeah, hey, <clears throat> the... Downstream symptoms that we're all experiencing of isolation and addiction and depression, anxiety, and for men, a lot of it is suicide. I mean, it is rampant, particularly for us men who are over the age of 40 or 55, myself. Um, we're looking at um, double digit increases in suicide rates. And those are all downstream symptoms to a lack of meaning and purpose, and most importantly, uh, kinship. Mm -hmm. And I think it was Nietzsche who said that only gods and monsters live alone. And yet here we are as a giant community of lone wolves. And um, for men, becoming a lone wolf is uh, being degraded down to a scavenger, which mm -hmm. means you're not able to hunt big game. You're not able to attract that woman you want and manifest the legacy that you want and live with the vitality and purpose that you want. So a lot of what K4 is, is a very intentional response to the lone wolf epidemic of today's men. Yeah. Well, and, and I should say, and I'll, I will run some video on this. I mean, you literally work with wolves. Yeah. <laughs> you take wolves to seminars. They, they're they all around you. You, as you described to me when we talked prior to this interview, that wolves, the wolf packs most closely resemble uh, well, our, our, our human interaction. Absolutely. Um, and the weird thing that's happened with, with culture over the same, you know, you could say from agriculture, but mostly industrial revolution where we see this big spike in isolation, the lack of meaning, and a lot of um, dysfunction between the, the sexes. This mm -hmm. is kind of where we fall, started to fall apart, where men have been required to do all the things that women are supposed to do. And women have been required to do all the things men are supposed to do. And it's simply not sustainable, that workload, and it's not our design function. Um, when we look at um, anthropology in indigenous cultures, we see um, women, you know, the matriarchal sphere, really running a lot of the inner tribal decision-making, resource management, um, running the calendars and the, the, the social programming. Now, you know, the men, the majority of that, you know, I'm, and we have, hundreds and hundreds of men in K4. Uh, if you ask them, the women are generally running the bank accounts. The women are generally running a lot of those um, decision-making things around the household. Mm -hmm. And men, and this is again indigenous, um, our sphere of control, patriarchy, is hunting, it's mm -hmm. exploration, it's defense, it's travel, it's the things that are outside the tribe. Mm -hmm. And wolves are the same. Wolves are matriarchal. They're run by a powerful female. 
And the men, or sorry, males of the pack, those are going to be the heavy hitters that go out and bring down the elk. And if you really ask at the core level, men, what do you want to do? Well, we want to go get an elk. We want to bring that back and go, look at me. I brought you an elk. And we want to be seen and we want to be acknowledged and appreciated for bringing back the elk. Yeah. And, and that's not happening anymore in our culture. Right. Right. You said that, that that culture has eroded and, and I'm going to interject or, or, or suggest that it's probably, you know, the feminist movement hasn't helped much. I mean, there's a there's obviously a, a there was a very good reason for that, but we've we've lost our way yeah. and people like and I'm, I'm guessing or I'm asking, you know, like yourself, I mean, do you take some flack for suggesting that men and women are different. I know like John Gray, uh, you know, the Mars and Venus, he takes a lot of flack from, from, yeah. for that. Yeah. And that's really what we need to understand, right? In clinical circles, mm-hmm. it's not even um, a point of contention. Right. Like, you know, there's, there's 50 years of clinical psychological data that say, well, women are stronger around things related to relationships. Mm -hmm. Men are stronger related to things around things. Mm -hmm. Men like things. And that doesn't mean that women can't like things and men can't like relationships. But when you start seeing those fringes, the numbers get pretty, pretty specific. Mm -hmm. When you look at engineers, well, the majority of engineers are male because we love things. Mm -hmm. The majority of teachers, nurses, the people who are dealing with people happen to be women because you have a natural proclivity for that. And again, it's not saying you can't cross. Right. We're just looking at the edges. So exactly. It's and this is true across every species, across every culture and every era. You see a diversification or specialization in the roles. And it's our gift. Mm-hmm. Our gift is that we are a species of specialist. And and it's what makes us great because it drives adaptability. Evolution is not survival of the fittest. It's survival of the most adaptable. And I, if I, if you're really good at something, I'm going to give you the ball. And if mm-hmm. I'm really good at something, give me the ball because we're scoring the same points. And that is the alignment core of relationships. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I love that the most adaptable. I read that when I was studying up on you, and that that, that you know that just made so much sense. Well, so what is it then, like? I know that you said in K4, the, the average age of the men is 50, which kind of makes sense because as you age, you become more attuned to wanting to work on a relationship or learning more about that kind of stuff. What, when it comes to romantic relationships, what, what are some of the key things that you see? Is there a trend that, that you see? Yeah. Um, and the surprising one for me is uh, when I started getting deep into the men's movement, and I was actually part of the first men's movement back in the 80s. And, and I saw it peter out. And it petered out because it, um, it got embarrassed because it never got integrated into the traditional masculine world. It was a bunch of men escaping from a world they couldn't compete successfully. And so they, they were running off to, you know, hug trees and drum in the woods. And what's happening now again, too, with Burning Man and Coachella and a lot of the escapist men's movement. Mm -hmm. And really the function of any of these retreats is to advance, bring it Mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. So um, the men's movement now, when I launched K4 three years ago, was a response to that. I I recognize this is important. Um, And so I've been really pushing deep into this in the last three years. And, and one of the big things to answer your question is one of the core men's issues is a lack of appreciation. Mm. And it's, it's some, it's seemed as shameful to say you need to be appreciated, Mm -hmm. but that, that is a a core need. When I say, when I bring back an elk, I, I really, I've sacrificed my life to do this thing, this career that defines me. But men are defined by what we do. Mm-hmm. And women and children are defined by what they are. Yeah. It's, a, it's a big distinction. And I get it. There are some of your listeners are going to be like, that offends me. I'm like, <laughs> well, take a look at it. And yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
Exactly. And I want to uh, just comment on something you just said with the men's movement. What, what I love about your approach, because sometimes when you hear a men's movement, you think about all these men that hate women. And we get that on this show, too. The comments, all women are this, all, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm never going to date again. I'm never going to get married again. And you're a man who really likes and loves women. You're married. You're in a successful <laughs> marriage. I want to make that clear because I want our audience listening from that from that perspective. And yes, I agree. The appreciation is is huge. That's come up in other in other segments as well. What can men do about that though? How do you teach them? I mean, that's something maybe women need to know, or do they under they don't even realize that they need appreciation? Yeah. Um. Okay. One of the one of the core things for men, and I don't want to dive too deep into this, but um, we require an initiation uh, mm. that takes us from an adolescent boy psychology to a mature male psychology. And it's the moving from the currency of external validation to that of kingdom, legacy, mm -hmm. purpose, meaning. None of us, uh, at least my guess, all of your male listeners have not been initiated because we've lost this for hundreds of years. Mm -hmm. So we're still stuck in this kind of needy boy psychology, even though we're running around in full male bodies and male careers. And it is a there's a dichotomy there that's really hard to do because at some point we're going to have to recognize that um, we're responsible ultimately for what we create, what we do for our character in, in, in larger context, our culture. Mm -hmm. And, and that's a really important dynamic that men have to start with is that uh, you're not a victim. So stop blaming the women. Mm -hmm. There are no villains. So again, stop blaming the women and nobody's coming to save you. You are the author of your story. You're the mm -hmm. hero of that story mm -hmm. and, and start claiming that and get back in the arena. And yeah, you're gonna get the shit kicked out of you. That, I mean, that's the reality. Yeah. Relationships are hard, jobs are hard, getting in yeah. shape is hard, it's all hard. Yeah. But uh, there is, a, a, there is a, an honor and there's redemption at the end of that. And, that, and that's the important part. Um, you're not going to be made a king by attracting a queen. You become a king by attracting or pursuing the crown, the queen will come to you. You get your life together and your queen comes to you. That's the game. Stop running around after the queens. Like get your own house in order. Be a man who is pursuable. Be a man who's successful. And and I, I just and I say this regularly, and again, this is gonna trigger some of your listeners probably. Um, women break rules for alphas and they make rules for betas. Sorry, that's the reality. Women will always pursue powerful males. That's the game. So, and I'm not talking money, I'm not talking bench press, I'm talking the power of character. Can you show up? Can you raise your kids? Are you, are you dependable? Like, are you an honorable man? Mm -hmm. Women will pursue that. And you get your queen when you get your crown. You're right. It, it, it does trigger, but we, we drive that home. We drive that message, have in other segments. As a matter of fact, with Joni, we just did a segment on do nice guys. Why do nice guys finish last? And that's exactly what you're saying. It doesn't really have anything to do with, with money or, you know, look, I mean, it doesn't hurt, I suppose, but it's really about the boundaries. And that's what you're, you're expressing now. Um, men, one of the things for, for men in, at K4 is, we need to stop making these endless requests to women and, and passive aggressive hints and um, nudges and then get resentful when we don't get them. Well, at some point you have to move from request to requirement. Mm -hmm. Hey, honey, this is my requirement. I need this to happen. Mm -hmm. And I put it on the table yeah. because um, that starts to move things forward. And yes, you may be disliked short term. Sure. but you will be respected long term and that's that kind of alpha shift yes. and i'm using the word uh alpha in the in the wolf context which yeah. means leader you're a leader you are leading and it doesn't mean that we're leading you it means we're leading ourselves that is yeah. the alpha energy yeah no I, I i agree i mean women like a man who's a charge and yeah, we'll probably get comments, you know, that, that are triggered and that's okay. I just really feel like we are at a point 
in, in, in life or in, in this time period where we just need to acknowledge that men and women are different. It's not that one is better than the other. We do different things. I mean, we bear children. You don't. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. alone is we're different. And why is that so hard to swallow? Why do why? Yeah. <laughs> and how many how many years do you sacrifice from your career mm-hmm. to have children and then, hey, don't forget raising the children. Right. Like it's a solid 20 years. Mm-hmm. And my wife still works. She runs a company. She's a powerful, powerful woman. Yeah. You know, there half of her bandwidth is raising our daughter mm-hmm. and making sure that there's healthy food and that we're right. the bills are paid. Like she allows me to go hunt big game. And and I honor her for owning the kingdom. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, hey, you're the quarterback, I'm kicking the ball. Okay, we don't have to like argue about hey who who scored the points. Mm-hmm. We scored the points, and right. we win the game, and ultimately we win the championship if we do that well. Yeah, that, that that's a great analogy, terrific analogy. Well, so if I ask you the question then that we talked about at the beginning of the segment, which is the root cause of all relationship issues, how how, how do you answer that? I, I can't give it in one simplistic thing. That would, um, that's kind of <laughs> a dialogue, I guess. Um, it's certain there's going and it sounds really cliche about, um, communication, but that's going to be a huge one. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be some big challenges that we have around not understanding the, either you want to call it the evolutionary psychology or biology or the cultural expression of men and women, they're different. And unless we can communicate those, it's never going to work effectively. There's going to be uh, resentment, which is what's happening now. Yeah. And resentment eventually becomes contempt. Mm-hmm. And that's what I see what happens with uh, so many men who have been uh, dismissed, mm-hmm. have been unable to achieve what they wanted, again, from careers, fitness, or with women. Mm-hmm. And the moment yeah that men have gone from um, resentment to contempt Mm -hmm. it's end game yeah and and so we have to stop the the uh resentment piece and i and i think the probably the the big solution to that is responsibility Mm -hmm. Uh, take responsibility i'm talking to the men now take responsibility for your internal leadership for your uh claiming the authorship of your story of of stomping out that nice guy who needs constant external validation and start owning the heroic nature of your story pursue your crown and the queen comes to you and that that would that's my that's my soapbox for you today <laughs> no I, I i love that that's uh yeah it makes it makes total sense to me to me i know the people people that will be offended um and that again that's okay that's why we have these great discussions and i'm really interested in the comments on this so our viewers they're they're wonderful they interact you know by the by the hundreds anyway and i'm really looking forward to this this is to me is such an important uh, conversation uh, philip i we're coming to the end of of this segment is there anything else that you want to that you'd want to add that you want our men to take away from this topic before we close. Okay. The big one. And and I touched upon this is central thing about initiation. When Mm -hmm. we talk about, um, becoming the alpha or becoming the hero, becoming like owning your life, right? Your legacy. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can't do this alone. You can't watch this podcast and go, I'm inspired. I'm going to, that's a new year's resolution. They're done in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Uh, we require, other men to be able to push us across that goal line and it's really hard because to be able to really change some core things about yourself your story your belief system uh, those old stories have to literally die so the new ones can be born and that process the initiation process um, is very uncomfortable it's not unlike birth it's a violent process and so get a community of men And I don't mean just your drinking bros or your sports bros. Um, In fact, one of my mentors said, if you remove sports, alcohol, and your job, Mm -hmm. men do not have friends. Yeah. So let that sink in, gentlemen, and realize that you're not getting any of that good stuff, that big game life stuff, 
until you have a pack of aligned men. And whether that be K4 or some other men's group or the Masons or like jujitsu buddies, like find a bunch of men who are going to hold you accountable for playing with your king status. And the rest happens. It'll happen organically. Yeah. Well, and yeah, I will, of course, link to all of your information, Phil, if anybody's interested in this program and just in your, in your services in general for team building leadership. It's, it's really, really super interesting. And I think from what I read, that your, you know, K4, or just where you come from, is so much more appealing to men because it's so masculine. You know, a lot of the, the men stuff, as you said before, they're seen as very weak, and that's not that's not what this is. So anyway, again, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to the comments. And there's a couple more things I want to talk with you about, so I want to hold you over for another segment, and we'll see you again soon on Second Act TV. <laughs> If you haven't done so already, please be sure to subscribe to our channel. The button is right here. Just click on through to YouTube. And when you see the little bell right next to the subscribe button, hit that too and we'll notify you every time we launch a new video. See you next time.